Welcome back guys, I hope you had a great weekend and another quiet start to the week on Wall Street here. The S&P 500 actually had its smallest daily range all year. The difference between the high and the low today wasn't even 20 points and we saw on the Nasdaq as well, it was a pretty narrow range day along with the Dow and Russell as well. And just looking at the heat map, you can see it was a really flat day out there. No real outsized moves anywhere, just some. We did get a bit of a bump up in the financials. They gapped up but sold off towards the end of the day and industrial and healthcare was a little weak today as well. And probably why the markets are quiet today is we didn't have much in the ways of economic data nor tomorrow, but the big one will be Wednesday that we're looking for. We'll be watching to see what the CPI and inflation rate comes in. It's expected to have year over year growth of 5%. And this is one of the big economic data points before the next Fed meeting in June and will be a key input into their decision. So we've got consensus at 5%. If that were to come in higher than expected, then the Fed may well be inclined to hike rates. Otherwise, if we come in lower than 5% and with what's going on in the banking sector, they may indeed pause and communicate that they're on pause, which would be a significant event for the markets as well. And Fed fund futures today did increase their probability that we are going to get a hike from 8.5% on Friday to 15.5% today chance of getting a hike. Fear and greed index still sitting at a healthy 60 level. And dark pool buyers are showing a little enthusiasm here today with the DIX index at 50%, which is slightly bullish. And we just got corporate insider data for Friday, came in at 131 purchases with 164 sales. So insiders have picked up their activity over the last week or so, but there's still more selling than buying. And a real quiet day in the options market here, only 30 million contracts changing hands with 53% of them calls. And a continuing padding I've been seeing is a lot of puts being purchased in high yield bonds. Today it was 88% of volume was puts. And I have seen some research lately that shows high yield bonds are not really pricing in a recession. So I'm wondering if a bunch of big traders are buying puts on high yield in anticipation we may get a recession later this year and which would cause the price of the high yield bond ETF to dive. And the Chicago Fed president's said the credit squeeze is just beginning and he goes on to say I think you have to say that a recession is a possibility you do not land the plane nose down we have to figure out how much of the work of monetary policy is getting done already through the credit conditions and we have to be mindful that that's not going to be evenly distributed around the country he also said we're trying to figure out what is a very strange business cycle coming out of the pandemic and weighing that against the tightening that's coming from these bank failures and uncertainty and to add on to that uncertainty about whether the government is going to pay its bills he says a lot of potentially weird things could happen in financial markets if lawmakers negotiations go down to the wire before clinching a deal i'm worried about things like we're going to reignite a bunch of banking stresses where financial institutions have treasuries as their collateral on the consumer side you would see interest rates going up on mortgages on auto loans on credit cards a whole bunch of things that are directly tied to the rate of treasuries i think you would have a lot of chaos and that's true. We're walking into new waters here because we've never seen this before. The US potentially default on its debt or get really close. The credit default swap market is actually pricing in the highest chance that the US will default on its debt ever. So the market's looking towards that meeting this week between Republicans and the Biden administration to see if they can work out a deal. And it could be another reason why we're seeing low volatility in the markets today because they're just waiting for that. Because if they can't work out a deal, I can imagine the risk markets might sell off a bit here. And since the US government has racked up a $31.7 trillion debt, a lot of people are coming out with some interesting ideas to fix it. How about we make a trillion dollar coin or 14th Amendment? And once again, they'll do some financial engineering to get out of this instead of just letting economic reality take over and practicing some strong financial discipline and cutting spending. And at the end of the day, they're probably going to have to raise taxes to eventually pay for this, which will probably be the millennials mostly paying for this debt load that the boomers have racked up. And thinking about all that just reminds me of this old meme here that says, if you can just print money, then why am I paying taxes? Which, when you think about it, is actually a pretty good point. OK, let's head on back over to the charts. Okay, so all international stock indices are stalling up here, except the DAX is sitting right just below 16,000 near new highs for the year. And all other stock indices, including the China 50, are above their 50-day average as well. And so we had the lowest volatility day of the year, so you'd expect the new VIX one day to get crushed today, which it did, just priced in 11 points of movement today and tomorrow. However, the VIX 9-day and the VIX 30-day only came off a little bit and kind of held up a bit there. You'd expect it to come off a lot more when we had the lowest volatility day of the year. We didn't even get 20 points wide on the S&P 500. So I can imagine going into Wednesday with the inflation data and the meeting this week expected between government officials to ne 
negotiate a new debt ceiling could get volatility spiking up later this week and we may indeed see over 20 again on the VIX but I wouldn't be surprised if just like all this last Fridays over the last couple of months that we crush again on Friday and crush all the option premium out there for the dealers. And the VIX six month index is still sitting at a healthy 23 and a half as well so that's a bit of a healthy sloping contango curve from right at the front. So that's the market saying volatility is going to come back into this market at some point soon. And if you're hoping to buy cheap hedges six months out, you will just have to pay up a little bit for that as you normally should and do. Bond market volatility is still healthy at 135 on the move index. Still not much fear out there as measured by the amount of people buying puts. The cost of out of the money put options as measured by the skew index tail risk is still a little elevated here at 132. And breadth is still weak with less and half of stocks above their 20-day average and long-term 200-day average as well. Same with stocks making new highs, still tracking sideways. Growth versus defensive sectors, still tracking sideways here, just coming up to their 50-day. The equal weight S&P 500 against the normal one broke down to new lows for the year today. And the growth versus the value index actually reached new year-to-date highs today, and that's on the back of mega cap tech pulling those ones up. And just a quick look at the weekly chart on that spread. We're coming up to a bit of a resistance level here, around 1.87, where we've turned multiple times before. So we'll see how the growth versus value spread does if and when we get up to there because we've had quite a good bounce all year. Commodities versus stocks had a little bounce today but still on a bit of a downtrend here trying to find a bottom. And gold versus long-term treasuries actually broke out to new all-time highs today. And a little surprisingly, with all this bad economic backdrop of debt ceiling and recession, we've actually got junk bonds versus investment grade debt moving up here today above its 50-day. And that may be why we're seeing a lot of puts being purchased in high-yield debt, as traders out there are betting that high-yield debt is going to underperform over the upcoming weeks and months. We've got the two-year yield holding steady at 4%, and the 10-year government bond yield doesn't want to give up that big 335. 340 level we've bounced off it once again and continue in the sideways movement with yields as we have strong forces pushing it in both directions keeping it low is the banking crisis and expected credit crunch and keeping it elevated is still a healthy jobs market and a little bit of sticky inflation as well and here's the june fed fund futures contract and you can see they're just above five percent at 5.07 so that's market assigning a little bit of a probability that the fed will hike again up to 5.25. However, we've still got the September Fed Fund futures contract implying 4.94% and December 4.5%. So the market's saying we're going to get a few cuts later on this year as it's expecting the banking crisis to cause a recession in the economy. And just a quick look at government bond 10-year yields around the globe. Here's the UK sitting at 3.77, bit sideways here. The Euro Union at 2.33, Japanese at a low 0.41, and the China 10-year bond at 2.74%. And high-yield debt just lost its 50 again here today, but like we pointed out in the spread chart, investment-grade debt had lost it a bit more. And with that move up in bond yields, we did see the Treasury TLT fall here a bit today, 1.4%, and coming up to support. And this was the gap from when Silicon Valley Bank failed, so I would be expecting for that to hold. We may get a fill and bounce here, but it's a little bit of a quagmire because with this debt ceiling thing, that will cause a lot of fear in the markets and and put downward pressure on the rates and the Fed may step in to help with that as well, which would normally cause the Treasury bond to spike. However, if the government's not paying its debt, then that might cause a little bit of a run on treasuries as well. So who really knows how this all plays out? And the dollar doesn't seem to know either. Just keep tracking sideways at this 101 level. And Bitcoin looks struggling to break through that big $30,000 level. We just closed under the 50 bar today and the first time since we gone above it back after Silicon Valley Bank failed. Same with the Ethereum as well. Looks to have closed lower. Nice little bump up here in commodities today. Gold still holding that, that $2,000 level ounce. Not sure if it wants to break out to new all-time highs or not. And a continuing nice little bounce here in crude after we got that big hammer formation on Thursday and quickly pinged off that level. Natty Gas back above its 50-day here. Let's see if it can hold it for more than a, a few consecutive days. Then we may be able to call a bottom in this thing finally. And the IPO ETF had a good day today, up 2.6%. And this ETF is a good way to track demand for for new shares out there and kind of the appetite for risk. So while we're back above our 50 here, we're still well below that February peak that we saw. And I'll just take you out to a weekly chart for a bit of a bird's eye view. You can see it still traded really weak. It actually peaked back in February 21. And that actually diverged on the market because the market didn't peak to December 21. So that was a bit of a divergence with the IPO market. And you can see it's still very depressed down here. So typically in a bull market, you'll see IPOs do really well as there's a lot of demand for new stock out there. Same with ARK as well, similar pattern 
pattern and tracking sideways here and I'll just take you out to a weekly chart. And this is ARK, which systematically buys highly overvalued stocks. And typically in a bull market, the overvalued stocks will do well. And you can see here, we're in a sideways market at best. But tech is trying to make a comeback. And we can see that in the tech fund here, trading near new highs for the year. But discretionary stocks are weaker tracking sideways. And semis seem to have lost a little bit of their strength as well, still trading below the 50. Even weaker is retail stocks. And energy stocks continue to track crude, tracking a little sideways and sluggish here. Gold miners like gold are floating with new highs. Regional banks still trying to find a bottom. We gapped up here today, but sold off hard. Industrials still on a sideways sluggish pattern. Same with transport stocks. REITs as well. And amazingly, home builders floating with new highs for the year. And this may have something to do with there's just not much inventory coming to the market because everyone that's locked in their 2-3% rate doesn't want to sell. So that could help keep demand for new homes alive. But we'll see how that holds up through a recession if and when we get one. And the defensive sector is still holding up above their 50. Here's healthcare, staples, and utilities as well. Largest asset manager in the world, BlackRock still trading weak down here. JP Morgan, which has been the exception throughout all this mess, is the only big bank stock above its 50. Tesla had another little pop-up. I can imagine we're going to come up fill this gap completely tag it's 50 and then we'll see what happens there the video as well at the top of my box now i can imagine we're going to come up and tag 300 this week unless we get something bad from the debt ceiling and inflation data that causes the market to sell off but if we do get above 300 we may get another little short squeeze like this day here and apple still holding its earnings gap but didn't manage to find new highs today same with microsoft consolidating up here google was the winner today up two percent but still stalling out at a big resistance zone as well and the market's really liking this deal amd and microsoft put together which makes a lot of sense for both of them actually AMD was falling a bit behind NVIDIA and Microsoft really wants to gain a strong foothold in the AI space. Now they've got OpenAI, ChatGPT as the primary owner kind of investor in that. Now they've got a line of hardware with AMD to build some AI chips together. So this thing is back above its 50 on good volume. And I can imagine this could break out if the market holds up as well. Netflix had a good day here, back above its 50. And for some reason, meme stocks had a good day today. A lot of green out there in the meme space. And we had the Berkshire Hathaway annual meeting this weekend and got to hear from Warren Buffett. He also just reported their latest quarterly results, came in with a little beat at 369 a share. And the price gapped up a little bit here today and has been doing relatively well lately and Warren Buffett has been echoing a lot of the things that we've all been saying for a while now and he said on the weekend it's been an incredible period for the economy but that's coming to an end obviously with no more low rates and the Fed constantly pumping liquidity into the system that's all reversed and that's been the huge structural change we've seen in the market over the last year or so and he said himself the majority of our businesses will report lower earnings this year than last year so he has a really good insight and look to the US economy you could think of Berkshire Hathaway as like an ETF of America American businesses and Mr. Buffett himself who doesn't like to spark fear or anything like that has come out with a bit more realistic tone that things have indeed changed and like usual he's putting his money where his mouth is his cash pile has actually risen by 2 billion to 130 billion and he actually sold 13.3 billion worth of stocks in the first quarter and that was versus 4.4 billion that he purchased back in his own stock and only 2.9 billion in shares of other companies so Buffett was a net seller in Q1 this year. And we just got PayPal report in the after hours, currently down 5% at 71.50. And even though they slightly beat, they gave softer Q2 guidance, which the market doesn't like. And we saw some big moves in some tech stocks today. We got Palantir reporting and they actually beat significantly by 26%. And we're currently up 21% in after hours trading at 9.42 around this level up here. And a bit of insight into consumer discretionary spending is Six Flags Entertainment, a theme park operator. They just reported a bit better than expected. They still lost 84 cents a share and just a quick look at the weekly chart on this one still trading sluggish as well shopify continues to move up up 3.8 percent today to 64 and a half i continue to eye this off as a potential short just waiting for it to show signs of a bit of a top carl icahn stock off four percent today and it's going to be reporting earnings on wednesday so we'll be watching that one and the most vulnerable regional banks got a little pop-up today but they actually sold off his pack west western alliance and zions as well all similar patterns there and schwab continues to flirt with new lows so this 
this is the real big one. And if we see a run on Schwab and this stock price tanks, it's hard to see that not pulling the whole market down with it as it is a pretty big company. Okay, let's head on over back to the main indices. So much the same theme as the last couple of weeks, still a 250 point gap between net liquidity and the market and really calling up low volatility. The big events this week are inflation Wednesday and whether the government officials can work out a debt ceiling deal. That's what the market's really looking at here. And with that uncertainty, I mean, it's anyone's guess what's going to happen. So I've dialed down my gross exposure and my net exposure down to 40% net short with all that and just kind of a little bit of wait and see mode with a bit of a bearish tilt. Because if we get some good news on the debt ceiling and lower than inflation numbers, I wouldn't be surprised if we get a little bit of a shakeout above 4,200 here. And we'll see whether the market can hold if it gets above that. But market internals, looking at breadth and small caps and other high beta sectors, the market is still mostly weak overall. We've just had pretty good mega cap tech earnings and overall earnings as well has kind of held the market up a bit up here. But we'll see what happens on Wednesday. And that's all I've got for you today. But just before I go, I just want to thank all of you guys who regularly tune in, like and comment on the video. This channel has just gone over 1000 subscribers and I started it in the middle of January. So it's been really surprising the growth I've had. And I really appreciate all your support and feedback. It really encourages me to keep going and trying to make the best content as possible for you guys. And just a special shout out to all the regulars, Nicholas, Sebastian, Matthias, Brian, Tim, Vince, Andy, David, Joel, and I'm sure there's many others. I may not just know your name, but I really do appreciate you tuning in here every day. I know you've got a lot of choice out there on YouTube, what to watch. So I'm really grateful that you tune into my channel and I'll keep doing my best to keep improving these videos. I know I've got a long way to go with being a good YouTuber and good editor and speaker and all that. And so I hope to see you continue to stick around and together we'll all become better traders and investors. So once again, thank you very much for helping me achieve 1000 subscribers. I truly do appreciate it. It. And I hope to see you guys all again here back tomorrow. Cheers.